is Frank Joop, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, modular design. The good old saying is, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Is you know, you slice it in, in small parts, and that's also true for for these projects because today we got these mega projects. I worked for Fluor uh, for a long time, and uh, you know, when we had a project for uh, let's say uh, you know a couple million dollars, we were already happy. But now, of course, that is nothing. You see projects like uh, 20 billion and more, and these are so big that no one offers or no one contractor can use that. That, that, that is just impossible. Uh, you know, from a risk perspective, from a knowledge perspective. So what you have to do, you have to chop it up. You know, you have to do modular design. Now that's uh, that's easier said than done. You know, when you have a design and it's chopped up, like I say, show here in five pieces. You know, how do you get those uh, worked on and at the same time? you know, merge them together into one consistent uh, project. Because if you work for on a Shell or an Exxon or a BP project, they don't want to see five different pieces, you know, it needs to be one consistent design. Now the key, you know, to this is, and it doesn't matter if you do this traditionally in your office with uh, engineering products that are on the market, or as you see today in the cloud where everybody works in one environment, of course that helps too, but fundamental, no matter how you execute that cloud or just locally in your office, is this design basis. Because think about it, you know, if everybody's going to use their own standards and their own specs and it is not set very, very carefully up front, then how you will mesh that stuff together? You know, there will be inconsistency, there will be mapping, and there will be compromises, and basically you, you, you create yourself, uh, you know, in a lot of trouble if, if you don't define this up front. So very essential to, to modular design, I believe, is that you have your standards ready, maybe use DIN standard, maybe use ANSI standard, you know, your rule set to check your design, your specifications for piping, your specifications for instruments, those formats and standards need to be set. Now there are, of course, there are, you know, contractors outside the main contractors that do, uh, you know, uh, little packages, package units or so, and they may have some in-house additions. Maybe it gives the competitive edge or maybe, uh, you know, they do something special with that for the project. That's fine, you know, but in the end that needs to be stripped off when it goes back to the main project. Because I see many, many times, you know, when this is not set and let's say you create two uh, schematics on different design bases and you want to put them together, you know, the customers, uh, the, 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 the EPC saying, you know, it doesn't fit. No, no, no wonder, you know, you cannot weld a wooden handle on a steel pan, you know, it needs to be the same specification. So that's very important. Then the next thing, of course, when you have these pieces and they need to come together, there will be interfaces. Now, very important is that you manage these interfaces. Those are the points where you connect a line, where you connect instrumentation, you get cables, uh, motors, electrical cables. So it's very important that you have uh, an, an eye on making the right split, of course, a logical split, and then manage these interface points so you can, uh, can, can group the, the whole thing together when, it, when the pieces come, come together. Now the last challenge is, of course, that uh, yeah, not everybody is using the same tools and with that not everybody is using the same format. So you get a CAD format 1, maybe AutoCAD or CAD format 2, MicroStation, whatever, and still you have to manage the interfaces and still you know, these documents have to be produced for the project and accessible uh, uh, for the owner operator to maintain the plant. And that is also, of course, a challenge, but it is very doable because obviously there are many, many tools out there that can you know, visualize the, the different formats, you know, for construction phase and for the operational phase. But key to this is if you have to do intelligent design and you have modular design, that you set the design basis right and make sure that you have tools to manage these, uh, these interface points between the different disciplines. Okay, I know it is a big topic, and, uh, but it is of course something uh, that is uh, on everybody's mind when you do this big project, be a part of that. And like I said, uh, the cloud comes into play, uh, that makes it easy to access those tools. But on the other hand, cloud or no cloud, you have to set your, uh, your engineering standards up front to be successful in modular design and be successful, successful for, your, uh, for, your for your client, for your customer. All right, thanks for, uh, for sharing uh, your coffee break uh, uh, with me and uh, I hope uh, you know, it gave you some ideas and uh, some insight in, in modular design. Thank you. Mm -hmm.